Hi, welcome to my shop. I'm Jim Kearns. Uh, what I wanted to give you this tape about is working with the Stitz Polyfiber system, um, making repairs. I don't see a lot of videos on this whole process from start to finish on YouTube, so I thought I'd make one. Uh, since I have to do this repair work on my wing, uh, I need to get the gas tank out for a number of reasons, and there's some other funky things going on in the fabric here that I just want to take care of. So we'll be going through that. I'll try to uh, record all the steps, cut out some of the really boring stuff. Well, that's hard to do because it's all boring, right? I'll try to keep it relevant. Let's put it that way. A uh, couple things before we get started. I'm not an A&P, so I can't help you with the paperwork at all. You're on your own. Uh, I would recommend this. Uh, it's the polyfiber, uh, how to cover an aircraft using the polyfiber system. Read it cover to cover a couple times if you, you know, even if you have done this before, it's, it's just a ton of information in here. It's really worthwhile. And uh, they have a section on repairs. So it's good stuff. Um, working with the polyfiber, the, you know, the, all this stuff, the, uh, the poly tack, the poly brush, the poly spray, the poly want a cracker, they're all, you know, PVC plastic, I think it's PVC, uh, basically in, in a MEK solvent base and probably other things too. But it's, there's a really, the really nasty solvents, you want to keep it off your skin. Um, I've tried different gloves, you know, like the blue nitro gloves that TSA uses when they fill you up. Those, those are completely worthless. Um, the ones that I found that do work are these. Um, they're from Harbor Freight of all places. Nine mil nitro disposable gloves. Uh, they say for industrial use, whatever. Um, item number 68512 is the item for a size extra large. Um, they work. Uh, they don't seem to get soft and rip and disintegrate like the cheaper blue ones do. Uh, other tools, an iron. Um, the manual suggests using a iron with an, without an automatic shutoff. You can't buy those anymore. Um, so this has an automatic shutoff. But the nice thing about it is it takes 30 minutes to shut off. And all you have to do is push this little red button every once in a while. Uh, and it just keeps on ticking. So that resets the timer. So it's really not a problem. It's a Sunbeam Steam Master. Uh, it was about, you know, like 19, 20 bucks at Myers. So, you know, it's not it's cheap, but uh, it works. I calibrated it with the uh, digital uh, kind of oven thermometer. Uh, nice thing about this one is it's got a um, maximum temperature, minimum temperature at seen um, there. So yeah, so the maximum temperature since I last re saw reset it was 83 and a half. The minimum was 29.3 out in my shop. But when you got the probe underneath the iron and you, you know, once it comes up to temperature, you can clear those and just let the iron sit there and it cycles up and down a few degrees and you can check the maximum in and make sure that the whole the whole range of temperatures is good. I tried some of the cheap coil wound thermometers. Uh, those are crap. Uh, and I, I checked that too, put it in boiling water, checked it in room temperature. I put the, the cold end in the freezer and, and let the probe hang out outside, pull it out, make sure it's still red room temperature. It seems to work pretty good. It is made by, there it is, Favorware. I can do the Vanna White favorware. Um, but uh, again, I just got that at Myers. Another really useful tool is this putty knife. Uh, this one's kind of special because it's nearly as old as me and it's all worn out. And the corners are all worn and rounded and it's just rounded and worn and it doesn't dig in and it doesn't cut the fabric. So it's, it's nice to have, have that. Brushes, fabric, uh, small iron for corners and stuff. Those are all handy things to have. Lots of MEK. Uh, you can still, at least here in Michigan, you can still buy genuine 100% MEK from Clean Strip uh, at the local hardware stores. So you don't have to order that all the way from uh, your favorite aircraft supply place. And 
I think that's everything I wanted to talk about ahead of time. So let's start having fun. Okay, the first thing, of course, is to get some of this fabric off. There's a couple ways of doing it. One, you can just take a knife and hack and slash like I already did around the uh, fuel filler here. Um, but I, I want to take off the fabric aft of the, the main spar here and then overlap it here. I've got some, some a tape that runs along here. I want to get that tape off the tape over the rivets. I want to get that off and then I can just cut the fabric along here. I'll wrap the fabric around. And after I get the tape off I can cut it right at the spar. Um, so I want to kind of get this off neatly and not you know not just do that. What what seems to work best is is to use that uh, handy little worn out putty knife and the iron set at about 275, 250 um, and you know, work the tape here on the on the edge, get just the edge worked up, and I can get in with a putty knife and peel it. So as I get in here with my iron, I'm kind of heating up the corner of this tape. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure all you see is the iron on the film, but you know, I can feel it kind of dragging and sticking as it softens up the poly whatever, poly tone I guess, poly, poly want a cracker, get tired of all the polys uh, and usually if I get it softened up enough I can get a corner loose and once you get that uh, the fabric is pretty easy to peel another thing you can do is go at it with some MEK here Usually once you get it started, it comes right up. There we go. Well, okay. I've obviously got multiple layers here. do is stop right there. Okay. Right there. Okay, so that's coming off slowly. I'll just keep working my way up. And you'll see the next thing I have here are these uh, rivets that hold the uh, fabric to the ribs. And there's the reinforcing tape. Uh, once I drill out those rivets, that tape comes right off. Uh, basically, I'm just going to be repeating the process you've just seen, so no point in taping it, right? This, this tape is kind of a pain because it goes around the corners. But now that I've got it going, I can work in here with my rounded off putty knife and just keep, keep peeling it loose. When you get a flat section you can imagine it just once you get it started it just comes right off. These pop rivets are relatively straightforward. The biggest problem is because you, know, you got the pilot hole already there, right? Some of them like that it, you can't see it, but it just, they spin. You know, these, they don't, unlike a formed rivet, they don't fill the hole that tightly. If I can get behind it with a little bit of, and it just pops the head off. You want to try to avoid drilling through into the hole. Um, no, I think seem to be doing, it seems to go pretty, Right in one step. Okay. 
and then this will just peel right off and I can reuse it or replace it. Here we are in the back. You can see some of the problems. This is the bottom of the wing. There's some chafing going on here. There's a, it's like the other side. There's a bar on the bottom of the tank and a sharp corner. It's all stained from fuel. I worked the corner loose with a little heat and picking at it and this, this just comes, should just come right off. And as I suspected, there's a patch. This has actually been patched once. It still looks like crap, so we need to address the underlying problem. So here's a, there's a little loose spot here on this patch. Let's work it loose. And we'll, uh, we'll find out what's going on. You guys will find out. Well, you won't find out as soon as I am because you don't see the video. But it's almost like it's live, right? Recorded live. There's where we're going to it up. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, well, you can see these uh, bars that somebody welded on the tank for reasons that aren't clear. That's just like the other side. Not very good welding either. Um, on the bottom end, they're chafing here and here. And they had, on the other side, they squirted some glue and some glue in there. I, I haven't got a clue. Okay, we'll just open her up and see what other surprises. Somebody's cut some holes here and here. My on camps that other patch that'll be coming off. There's a patch here. I don't know. I assume it has something to do with the sending wire. There's not much clearance between the tank and the fabric for this wire to go through, and it's not shaped too bad. That's a good thing. Uh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> I don't know what somebody did to this thing. Uh, I guess I'm glad I'm taking it apart. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is crazy. Uh, a bottle cap, you know. How would, how would that... Uh, it's beyond me. It really is. Maybe I'll find some money in here. What are the chances of that? Uh, probably about zero. Okay, so this is going to come off. We'll get this rest of this off. Uh, what's going on here? I'm still not down to the rivets. I think there's got to be another layer of tape here. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera off while I explore. But we'll get this down to the first layer of fabric, get the rivets off, get the reinforcing tape off. So when I put my fabric across here, I can put it down this rib and I can put the rivets through the patch and the old, old fabric you know, and the reinforcing tape and, and get a, a reasonable repair going here. So I, one thing I will say, this is this uh, polyfiber aircraft P110. Some of the original fabric was uh, certified fa fabric, apparently, but well, you never know. Okay, so get to, I'm gonna cheat here. Use my handyman secret weapon here. No, not duct tape. Swiss Army knife. Don't tell the Swiss that I have this, you know. Because it kind of bubbles that tape up at one of the rivets. It gives me a starting point here. And again, once I have it started, I can generally. Rip it 
loose, and we'll get this tape off. I mean, this, this should have come off when they did the repair, so they get the fabric all the way down here and under the rivets. Well, there it is, pretty much deconstructed. Tank is out uh, as far as I need to go. What I'm not going to do a lot of, uh, because I peeled these tapes, you know, I'm almost, I'm down to the poly brush there. And I think I can get that off the surface with just a MEK and maybe a scotch Bright or something. Uh, what, what I wanted to show you though, so what I usually like to do is, uh, this is just a dry brush, but uh, you know, get an MEK, you know, dip the brush in MEK and I'll put it behind there like that. And then that loosens the poly brush from the fabric. And you can take a putty knife and just scrape the whole surface, you know, if you're trying to get off you know, the poly brush, the poly spray, the poly tone, the poly wagons, poly wogs, whatever, all those layers, you know, if you try to do it from the surface, it just takes forever and a lot of solvent and, you know, it, it sucks. But if you can get, if you got access behind it, you know, get that, get it to dissolve from the fabric itself. And with this old dull putty knife, you can just peel it off in sheets. So that goes pretty quick and you can get down to bare fabric and you get a good bond. Um, other than that, there were no real big surprises anywhere else. No idea what that green stuff was or why it was there. I don't see any reason for it to be there. Uh, everything else looks fairly reasonable structurally, so I'm generally happy. Um, zoom you over here, you can see the drag or anti-drag or whatever it is, this diagonal, it runs through the wing and connects to the rear spar or rear wing attach point. Uh, that's the main spar down the bottom. If you're curious as to how these things are put together. So that's the main spar. There's a sheet. There's a bunch of rivets here. I don't know what's on the other side. Uh, some aluminum reinforcing to get to the fitting and it holds the bolts to the airplane. These are the supports for the fuel tank. There's some padding there. I got to fix that. No big deal. Uh, some corner reinforcing. This aluminum here uh, just just spans this one bay. I'm not sure what it does or why it's there, but it's there. So there it will stay. Uh, was that on camera? That was on camera. Okay, good. And then uh, the trailing edge up here. It's just uh, aluminum. Uh, it's kind of folded here and then overlapped. Can't really see it, but it overlaps and there's rivets along here to make kind of a tube structure there. And it's all pop riveted to these ribs. The ribs have a uh, aluminum angle cap strips and then I think this aluminum on the so inside and outside is only the first bay here. I don't think that's in the other bays. I think there's only foam in those but I could be wrong. I haven't opened it up outboard. So that's how this airplane is put together. I'll move the camera over here. You can see there's the attach for the uh, main spire where it attaches to the fuselage, the rear spire is above. And you know, those two bolts hold the wing on along with the strut, which has the um, Yonkers style flat aileron, slotted ailerons, just like the Avid Flyer and the Avid, other Avid Flyer clones like Kit Fox, you know. And here's how each of those are attached. There's a little bit of movement in there so I'll double up add a couple three more rivets just to solid that one up and the next one just just to make me feel better okay and that's it for now okay so what I've got here is um, I'm going to be cleaning a little this off according to the manual I need, I need two inches of overlap and then the edge of the, um, the edge of the seam has to be overlap with two inch tape centered so I'll need a total of three inches of um, you know clean fabric that I can glue to 
There's an inch or so over here kind of hanging over the edge. Uh, you don't get a very reliable glue seam with that, so I'm just going to uh, ignore that, pretend it doesn't exist. And I got my MEK, I've got some uh, Scotch Bright. Uh, yeah, that's good. I found the back of my neck. So here I uh, folded the tape over double on itself on the edge and made a bit of a drip edge to minimize the amount of MEK that, that runs down here. I'll turn this up later, but you know, if I have runs down here.